Welcome and thank you for joining us to this edition of Coach's Corner. My name is George Webb. I'm one of the assistant coaches here for the Dover Sherman Raiders, and I'm here today with Steve Ryan, who is head coach of our Raiders and also the Tri-Valley League Coach of the Year. Congratulations, Steve. Uh, thank you, George. I really appreciate it. So we won't dwell on that long. we got a lot of work ahead of us over here. We're teams uh, sitting at 10-0. and We had a heck of a win last week against Hudson Hawks, knocking them off uh, out of the uh, Elite Eight. Uh, tough team in a, in a classic game uh, that we had over there. In fact, uh, one of the pitchers for the team made it to the USA today for uh, you know Friday night football. So that that's one that's going to go down and the team's going to remember for a long time. So today we'll talk a little bit about last week, but the real work at hand is getting ready for Shawshin. And we play them Saturday in Weston at noontime. So we're going to provide a little bit more information on that in a minute, but that's what the team is focused on. Uh, but maybe we can just look back to, to last weekend and what a heck of a night that was. Oh, yeah. Very exciting. You know, the just the weather, uh, the the... The atmosphere down there, you know, uh, being the away team at night uh, over there on grass in the in the monsoon, really, uh, in such an important game. And our kids really stepped up and played well. They really did. And and that stadium was perfect for this type of play. It was The stadium, I think, it was built in the 1940s. It has the field to it, and it's one of the few fields that we played on. It's still grass. We walked up, and uh, we were talking to coaches, and we said we love – these types of games because these are the games where the linemen can really dictate the outcome of the game. And uh, first half was a little more – second half the field got really sloppy, and that's where the game was won and lost, right? Absolutely. You know, um, our defense stepped up, our offensive line. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we threw a pass or we threw maybe one pass in the second half, and, you know, we just stayed behind our offensive line and, and kept feeding Mike the ball. Uh, defensively, our defense stepped up in the second half also and you know, threw the shutout. You know, the final score of the game was 20-7, to seven, uh, but then, again, the tail of the tape doesn't tell exactly what happened. Uh, when they uh, took the opening kickoff, they had a nice return, and uh, before we knew it, we were looking up pinned in deep in our own end zone. Yeah, um, and, you know, facing adversity again. We've said it all year. These guys have stepped up in the, in the moments when it's most important. Um, you know, they had ball first and 10 at about our, our 20 yard line, um, and we got a stop there. Uh, we came back and, and marched the ball pretty well. Um, but, you know, then they come back and, and they got the first touchdown in the game. Uh, so, again, you know, facing adversity. But our kids do a very good job of that. And, you know, the whole second half of the game, we really uh, dictated the pace. So all the points were scored in the first half. Um, the uh, the defense played at this game really was won by the defense. I think we were pinned deep within our own 10-yard line at least three, maybe four times, and we made the stop. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of real true goal line stops, goal line stands. Um, and, you know, the uh, Brian Olson interception return for a touchdown, you know, it really sets the tone for the game defensively. Brian had a heck of a game. He's had a heck of a year. Uh, we're going to go through the list of TVL All-Stars here in a little bit. Uh, but if we had to pick out a couple of players, Brian really, uh, you know, they say in big games, great athletes make big plays. And Brian certainly did. Yeah, um, you know, he, he's a big guy, big time player, and uh, he had the two interceptions, and uh, that kind of thing can really uh, turn a game. But it, it was, you know, it, it's such a team game that, uh, you know, you can't do it without all 11 guys that are on the field and the other 20 guys that are on the sideline. I tell you, when we look back, and we're going to pivot pretty quick because we get a lot of work and we're focused on the next game uh, with Shawshin, uh, which, again, the competition continues to, to go up as we get into the tournament over here. But one of my favorite plays from last weekend uh, was halftime. We had the opportunity to go indoors. It was a monsoon. It was raining out there. And not a single one of our guys wanted to go into the locker room. We stayed on the field, in the end zone, getting rained on for 15 minutes. And uh, when the opposing team came out, uh, I thought we were a little nuts, but we were ready to go. <laughs> yeah, you know, our guys, we, we told them we don't talk about the weather. You know, uh, we understand it's rain. Both teams are playing in it. But it, but if we're wasting any energy on the weather, uh, we're, then, you know, we're taking that away from what we should be doing on the field. Uh, and, and they really took that to heart. And they said, you know, at halftime, we don't need to go inside. So uh, we stayed outside in the rain, and uh, we, were, we were ready and rearing to go when the, when the whistle blew again. So that's a game that those kids and the coaches are going to remember for a long time. It's, it's, if you like football, 
uh, that's old school football, and uh, we, we that was just a grind out uh, both ways. We'd like to actually congratulate Hudson, uh, really high quality team, high class team. We really appreciate the effort that they put forward. When you get into a tournament like this, everybody takes it seriously and wants to advance. Uh, but uh, from coaching staff to coaching staff, I mean, hard fought game, couldn't ask for a better competition. So thanks to those guys. We're going to pivot now. Maybe we can just talk about the TVL All Stars. We'll wrap this and then we can talk about Shawshin, um, who we're, we're spending a lot of time focusing on now. So maybe you can go through our team uh, 10 and 0. Uh, we still have one regular season game to go, and that is Thanksgiving against Medfield, 10 a.m. at Medfield this year. Uh, but we're standing 10 and 0 uh, and coming up with the semifinals. So we had good representation for All Star, right? Yeah, we did great. Uh, it took home a lot of hardware from the uh, coaches' meetings. The um, Michael Polk was the MVP of the entire league, uh, which is you know is no greater honor than that. Uh, Makai Robinson, he was the Defensive Player of the Year, and uh, Matt Darren, he was the uh, Lineman of the Year, which again, great again, those are great honors. Every team in the league has five linemen, and he was voted the best lineman of the entire the entire league. We also had um, four other All Stars on first team All Stars. On top of that, uh, Griffin Rossbottom, Alex Banerjee, Brian Olson, and Emilio Kaby. Those guys, uh, you know, all had outstanding years, and and the league recognized all that. They were all, you know, unanimous choices for All Stars. Uh, so, you know, very happy with uh, that. On top of our first team All Stars, I think we also had five honorable mentions. So, just for the audience over there, the MV, the the awards are selected by the coaches in the league, right? Yes, the, uh, the, the league coaches, and uh, you know we vote on players, and if you get the, we are only allowed twenty five players uh, for the entire league, uh, and you know we took home seven of them, so. That's good. And all those guys that won the awards, really well-deserved. Uh, the MVPs, uh, we'll go in reverse order. Matt Darren, I'd like to do a, a special call-out to. Matt is one of the quietest guys on the team, one of our smartest players on the team, and just consistent all season long, playing really high level. So I'm really happy to see that Matt got that award. Um, Makai, been solid, uh, no secret, been you know the heart of the defense and lining up. And then Mike Polk, who played great for us last year as a junior, and he's been uh, unbelievable this year. Both uh, both sides of the ball, over a thousand. He's got twelve hundred yards rushing now, mm -hmm. and then uh, been really really tough uh, for us on defense as well. So I don't know if you'd want to add anything more to that. Um, well, you know, I think uh, those guys are, are honored by this, but I think they're also the first guys to tell you that it's a team game, you know, and, and they understand that. And uh, to me, when I look at, at how well we're doing as a team and how well the, these individuals are doing, I see it has this started, you know, 11 months ago when these guys were in the weight room and they were working hard and it's just all paying off now. It's great to see. It's really the ultimate team sport. When we get into Thanksgiving, one of the segments that we're going to do over here is talk a little bit about what football means. And a lot of times people think it's about winning games and there's nothing better than winning a football game. But what these guys learn on the field uh, are really a lifetime of skills of leadership, teamwork, and hard work. And if you put the hours in and the time in, it might not happen right away. But if you put the time in, it'll always have a good result over time. So we're really proud of our guys uh, for those awards. And again, the five alternates um, got a pretty good idea who, who they are and uh, probably going to be some pretty important guys for us next year. Hello, I'm Bill O'Donnell, Registered Deeds for Norfolk County. The holidays are a time of joy, but for some, a time of stress. We see firsthand at the Registry of Deeds the struggles of people when it comes to mortgage foreclosures. A number of families in the county struggle to put food on the table. Realizing that one out of every nine Massachusetts households is considered food insecure, the Registry of Deeds continues to hold its annual holiday food drive to benefit struggling families here in Norfolk County. We are asking for your help in collecting non-perishable donations such as canned meats, soups, vegetables, breakfast cereals, pasta, spaghetti sauces, along with household paper goods. To make a difference this holiday season, all you have to do is drop off a donation to the Registry of Deeds lobby 
located at 649 High Street in Dedham, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. If you cannot get to the Registry of Deeds, please check our website at www.norfolkdeeds.org for a food pantry location in your community. Donations are needed throughout the year. Working together, we can truly make a difference. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, so this part of the show, we're going to talk about uh, the task at hand. And uh, it's, a, it's another clash of unbeatens, 10-0 Shawshin, 10-0 Dover Sherburn. When you get to the semifinals, we're in the final four for Division Five. The winner ends up going uh, to the Super Bowl and gets a chance to play in Gillette on uh, December 2nd or 3rd. Our guys aren't even thinking about that. They're thinking about Shawshin, and uh, they're going to take it play-by-play play and uh, snap-by-snap. So maybe we can just talk a little bit about um, – how we're prepared? What should we? We haven't played Shawshin before. It's a good team. They're well coached. What do you think? Yeah, uh, very good team. Obviously, uh, to get to this uh, part of the playoffs and be in ten and zero, uh, certainly they're a good team. I think they're very athletic. Um, they're maybe not as big as some of the teams that, that we've beaten, but uh, their athleticism is through the roof. Um, they're well coached. They do a lot of things. They give us multiple looks. Um, they can run the ball, they can throw the ball, and uh, defensively they're all over the place. You know, they will, they'll blitz and they'll come at us from every direction, so we have to be ready for everything. In, in reality, what they remind me of is, is kind of like us, you know, a very athletic team, um, not as big as some of the teams, but uh, just a, a team that will come at them, come at the opposing defense and come at the opposing offense. They do quite a bit, been talking to the coaches, scouting the tape. Uh, so it's not like a typical team we come out and we say they're going to come out and play a 4-3 or whatever it is. They play in multiple schemes, right? Yeah. So from offense, uh, maybe we can take, break apart both sides of the ball and special teams here. Our offense versus their defense, we know they like to stack the box, right? Right. Uh, a lot of teams um, will try to do that against us, especially with Michael uh, running the ball so well. So, you know, they want to get as many guys close to the line of scrimmage. Um, and, and we understand that. And, you know, sometimes uh, we'll try to run Michael right through him, and sometimes we'll try to throw the ball over the top. So uh, I haven't looked at the weather, but I think it's supposed to be clear on Saturday. 41 degrees and clear. Okay, so it's good football weather for you know third coming in the third week of November. Uh, we're playing in Weston. That's a turf field, right? Yes, a nice field. Yeah, we played there a few times, so our guys are familiar with it. The stadium is actually a great place to play uh, football. From a defensive perspective, uh, if we can talk about their offense, I think they have a sophomore quarterback, um, if I'm not mistaken. And wh how, what's your assessment of their capabilities? Um, well, what they're going to do is is give us a lot of different looks. You know, they'll be uh, they'll show us empty sets, they'll show us spread, they'll show us uh, some tight end looks, um, and and they'll be, they're very balanced. You know, they'll throw the ball as, as often as they run, and um, I think they feel that they can run any of their plays on any down. So uh, we we just have to be ready for everything. And from we've talked to some other coaching staffs, and they said Shawshin was. Uh, uh, I think the number four seed, but quietly they thought this was one of the teams to beat. Yeah, um, you know we've talked to you know the Hudson guys had, squ had uh, you know scouted them and thought that absolutely it was the best team they had seen. So anything else we should be thinking about? You know, special teams. Any thoughts there? Um, you know what we try to do is um, you know. Well, we have to improve on what we did last week, certainly on our kickoff game. Uh, but, you know, we try to put our best athletes out there. We, we think that, you know, that's a third of, third of the game, so it's really important. So uh, we just try to put our guess, best guys out there and, uh, and have them do the right things. You know, it's interesting. As we get ready for this game, last year we won the Tri Valley League uh, championship, first time in 43 years. The kids are excited. Uh, I think you got the Gatorade after that game, uh, and then we went on to to win a playoff game, and then uh, we got stopped short uh, by Swamp Scott. This year, uh, the kids are excited, but it's different feel. If they've been to the playoffs, and uh, they want more this time around. Right. You know, uh, we've already advanced another game. Um, you know. 90% of the teams this week have the week off. You know, it's only the teams in the final four that are uh, that are still playing. Um, so we're really ex we're really excited about this opportunity. 
That's what you like. You like championship teams when they come down to it. And uh, candidly, any of the final four that make it, they're all championship calendar uh, caliber teams. Uh, they're all ready to go at it. And uh, any of the four could end up in the Super Bowl. What I like about our guys is it isn't as giddy happy we made it here. It's mm-hmm. we got a big job coming up on Saturday. Right. We're focused. Um, you know, we know our season's not over. Uh, we, we have goals still to set. And, and, you know, one of them is winning this week. So it's Wednesday, um, tomorrow's Thursday. Throw us a little off. It was a little surprising that we're playing Saturday instead of Friday, and does that make any difference for us? Uh, you know, we just come out when they tell us to go, and we're ready to play. Somebody asked me that the other day, and I said, you know, if you wanted to, f- to have a go in the parking lot right now, I think our guys would line up and be ready to go. The last two weeks of practice have been really good. Uh, the prior two weeks of practice weren't so good, and that showed on the field. I think the guys may have learned that the quality of the practice, if you can't do it in practice, you can't do it on game day. How are we doing this week, and uh, do you think that's resonating with them? Uh, I think we've had some of our best practices this week. You know, uh, it's very smooth. Uh, the kids are, are, you know, focused and, and tuned in, and I think they want this as bad as we do. So uh, any final thoughts before we go and wrap? we got a couple of interesting segments we're going to bring up, uh, go a little longer for the playoff edition here, but any final thoughts you have for, for the audience? No, we're just all thrilled to uh, to be here, and um, you know, the kids are playing great. So you know, they're, they're exciting to watch. Yep. So this is going to be a good uh, biggest game in school history coming up, and uh, the twelfth man. I we keep saying it, but it really does make a difference. Uh, it gives the kids energy, and candidly, sometimes when there's a call, it could go either way. When you have the stand out there, you know, sometimes the groans and groans, they do kind of get heard. So um, we ask you to to, to show up um, in force and fill the stands if we can on uh, Saturday. Like I said, it's a great stadium and not too far of a ride. So we hope everybody turns out. Dover Sherburn TV is not going to be able to live broadcast the game this week uh, because the MIAA finals and semifinals uh, are broadcast by its NFS uh, HS. Uh, we're going to put the link over here. I probably just got that wrong, but we're going to put it up over here. If you'd like to live stream the game, you can log on to it and you can get access to it. For those that might not want to do that, uh, we first of all, we encourage you to show up at the game in person. But if you can't, then Dover Sherburn TV is going to uh, delay, tape delay the game, and that will be sent out a day or two. Um, after we start. We'd also like to take this opportunity while we're putting graphics up to uh, see if you have any questions for Coach's Corner. We'll be doing a Thanksgiving edition, uh, and then we'll see where we go from that. Maybe a season, uh, one more edition after that if we're fortunate. But if you have any questions, please send uh, them into the graphic below, uh, and we'll be sure to ask Steve or anybody else on the team. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Be great. Participate. Welcome back. Uh, we're here with uh, two of our four captains. The other two had to take off over here, uh, but two of my four favorite guys. I know we say that, but these guys are really standout players. Alex Banerjee, and we have Mike Polk. Uh, congratulations, Mike, starting off with you, uh, TVL uh, M- MVP. How does that feel? Yeah, uh, it's a great feeling. Um, it's a huge honor to get that award, but I'm trying not to think about it too much and just focusing on the next game. I couldn't have a better answer than that. You've got Shawshin coming up on Saturday, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so you played four years football, right, with us, and uh, were you in the middle school program as well? Yeah, I've been playing uh, since third grade. And, yeah, I started with DS, and I bounced around town sometimes, but mainly DS. So what was a big, what was a big change for you this year? Last year you played really well for us as well, but you really leveled up uh, this year. What do you think the big difference was? Uh, I think – just getting the – I didn't really get any run plays last year, and I was more of a receiver. And I think in youth football I was always a running back, so being able to go back and play that position has been really helpful for me. It's really helpful for the team too, but really you're, you're, uh, you've been great on both sides of the ball and defense as well. Yeah, I mean, that's all a testament to the line and this guy right here. So. Yep. 
And so the linemen, uh, we love these guys. We call them the unsung heroes, right? Because they knock holes so you guys, the quarterbacks and the running backs, can make the big plays. But, Alex, you've been an important part of this team as well. So you want to talk a little bit about uh, you got a nice all-star nomination. Can you tell a little bit about it? Um, yeah, so this year, you know, coming in, um, I knew I'd step up in a big way. Um, we had some new O linemen and D linemen. Um, and I think that this year, you know, we've really put it together and have been really strong, um, not only in the regular season and the postseason. And um, hopefully that continues all the way until we win the state championship. So um, let's talk about the offensive line in particular. We got a big uh, challenge coming up this week, right? Yeah. Um, Shashin, one of the bigger teams, um, definitely have some good people up front there. Um, but we just got to keep doing what we've been doing all year. And, um, you know, every person is beatable, especially in the playoffs. You know, it's whichever team comes out to play. And um, I definitely think it's a good challenge, but I think um, we're all up for it. So, One thing I've noticed about you guys is um, you, you have some pretty good adjustments and good communication on the line, right? In some ways, line is, uh, aside from quarterback, line's probably the second most difficult position in the on the team, right? Yeah, and um, the adjustment the adjustments, I would say, is um, definitely from Coach Lochiato. Um, he does a great job on the sideline, you know, looking at what the defense is doing. And then, you know, at halftime, we'll come in and adjust and um, try to find a better way to go about running the ball and our pass protection. So, um, you know, he's really the mastermind behind it. And, um, you know, we just kind of listen to what he says. Um, and certainly if we have something that, you know, we see, we'll relay it to Coach Ryan and Coach Lochiato and um, hopefully we can better run the ball, I guess. Get this man some looks. <laughs> Knock some holes for him. You guys are both passionate about football, and you want to play in college too, right? So you're looking at some some programs. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, you know, currently awaiting a couple decisions, um, and then I guess we'll see if I could play at the next level. I know um, we've gotten some looks, so hopefully I can continue on for the next four years. And Mike, what do you think about playing in college, or is this your is this your last uh, last bit of football? Uh, I definitely want to play a sport in college, and I'm deciding between either lacrosse, football, or both. So I'm definitely like looking around and seeing what offers I can get for football. Got it. And so if you need to help choose between the three, I think our coaching staff might be able to help out a little bit. So, guys, the last thing I want to talk about is culture. We don't have the other two captains over here, but you guys, we've said it all year. It's every football, you usually get a couple of guys that, you know, are a little outside the rails. This isn't that kind of team, and it wasn't last year either. you got a really good group of guys, and a big part of it is the leadership that you four provide. So you want to talk a little bit about the culture that's kind of fought, carried through over the last several years? Um, yeah, so obviously last year we had a really good season as well. Um, the captains, Johnny, uh, Henry, Ryan, and um, Derek did a really good job. You know, just positive environment, um, but also pushing everyone to do their best. And um, honestly, us four captains, you know, we try to replicate that. Um, I know Griffin and Mike, uh, Mackay are more vocal leaders, and Mike and I are kind of more lead by example guys. But um, you know, we really try to keep the team as like one, you know, unit rather than an individual game, and um, make sure that everyone's, you know, doing their job properly, but you know, also having a good time and you know, really trying to work hard and um, hopefully be a cohesive, like, team rather than just, you know, 11 guys just playing their own game. Yeah, I think uh, last year the captains and the team really did a good job of implementing a better culture, and I think this year we've just carried that on and executed. The thing I like about it is you guys uh, is you guys are all playing well. It's not a star culture. It takes 11 guys every time you go out to, uh, to, to play ball. And uh, it doesn't matter whether somebody, somebody's a sophomore. We've got some freshmen stepping in every once in a while, junior, senior. It's the next man up, and you guys are welcoming that. And you don't have the ageism that a lot of high school football teams has, you know, the, making the, the freshmen do all the work while you guys go out of practice. Um, so you guys deserve a lot of credit. You've kept that culture going, and it's going to be handed down to the next group of guys. Mackay is one of our other captains, and Griff uh, is the other, and uh, it's all four. You guys are cut from the same mold and have done the same thing, uh, doing a lot of things off the field, on the field, and then encouraging the next guys up. So when you guys graduate, there's going to be four other guys that are going to be able to step up with the same culture. So you guys deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, any final thoughts as we wrap this segment? Um, yeah, 
come out to the game Saturday, uh, 12 p.m. at Weston. Um, you know, 12th man is like such a big thing. You know, I can't really explain it, but it just gives you that, you know, energy that we really need as a team. And, um, you know, the more the better. So bring your friends and um, hopefully we can progress forward and uh, win. That's it. Well said. <laughs> So the 12th man, we'll leave a final thing. It does, I've been telling all year long, we've been encouraging people to turn, we've had great turnouts. So it does give you guys energy on the field, right? And uh, I mean, how, is impo how important is it to you guys to see the stands full? Um, yeah, so honestly, like sometimes it can get like a little tiring in there and, um, you know, the big third down, fourth down, um, you know, swing plays, it's really important to have a, like a loud zone and just, you know, seeing people in the zone, you know, supporting the team. And um, it really gives us life. It gives the entire team life. And um, we're really fortunate to have a great turnout to most games, um, especially Hudson, where it was, you know, downpouring and mud everywhere. But um, I think that the support has been overwhelming this year. And hopefully we can keep it up all the way through the rest of the season and um, make sure that, you know, they give us the energy we need. And it's it's for those that haven't played football. Uh, when you get out there, uh, third down, when you're playing D, especially if the crowd's loud, opposing quarterback, uh, his line can't hear his cadence, right? So it leads to offsides and uh, and and penalties, which helps our team uh, in tough situations. So so it's it's a real thing. Mike, any final thoughts before we wrap? Uh, just we're gonna leave it all on the field on Saturday, and I hope as many people that can show up show up to the game. That's it. These guys are focused. Saturday, noontime. Weston, be there. Thank you. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't want to be one of the nameless. I'm going to wake up with the mindset that one day I'm going to make it. And I Don't try to stop me, I exist to write your story. Welcome back, and I'm here with one of my favorite guys on the team, uh, Garrett Webb. Uh, I know this guy a little bit. He's number 18, starting quarterback. Uh, he also, uh, we also have uh, Ronan Richards that couldn't join us. Ronan is also one of our quarterbacks, also having a great season. You guys make a great team out there together. So, Garrett, I thought for this segment, maybe you can. Uh, we're sitting at 10 and 0, and uh, so you've started 10 varsity games now. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between the first night under center and uh, and the progression to to last week playing Hudson? Yeah, a few things I've learned from the first to the 10th is that I have a lot more time than I did on JV. I've learned to use that time a little bit more since then. I've also uh, gained greater connections with my wide receivers, my linemen, and I've gone down my wide receiver's speed so it's easier to hit them in stride, things like that. So. How important is the communication between your line and your receivers? It's really important. If our line and our receivers aren't on the same page, then the whole play is going to get screwed up. So. So you know the, the playbook really well, and it's one thing as a player to know your role, but now what I'm seeing when you're out there, you're much more comfortable, and now you're placing the other guys and directing them to make sure they're in the right spots too, right? Yeah, we need to make sure everybody's in the right spot or the play isn't going to work how it's supposed to. So I just try to help out with that. So one thing that we talked about is you said the game's slowing down a little bit, right? When you get up on, under center, you can look around, read the Ds uh, a little quicker. Yeah, everything's like... The reading the D's is quicker, and um, and sitting in the pocket, looking for my going through my progressions is slower. So that's good. And w uh, what I've noticed too is when you're running, you're picking up the open yards, and you're you're lowering the shoulder, running with conviction, right? Yeah, I'm definitely more comfortable finding the open space and going towards it. Um, that usually isn't one of my strengths, but I've I've utilized it pretty well in the few few games. And it's 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 also a game of confidence too. So now you have the confidence to take the yards rather than feeling compelled to throw. And uh, we're fortunate, both you and Ronan, both you guys can throw well, both you guys can run really well. So it can get very difficult for opposing defenses uh, to, to game plan against that because they don't know. Uh, both you guys can do a lot. They just don't know which direction it's going to come from, right? Of course, yeah. Ronan's been uh, really helpful uh, to us in the kicking game, and he wants to kick in college, so he's 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 doing a terrific job for us on kickoffs. Uh, punts have been very good, and uh, the um, 
in the, in, in the kicking game in general. So, um, so you guys are, are working very closely together, right? Of course, yeah. So the team is preparing for Shawshank. Any thoughts on uh, uh, the prep this week? The team's pretty healthy. You guys focused? Yeah, we've been more focused than we have been in multiple weeks. Everybody's really locked in. We all want this win really badly, so yeah. Different feel this year. Last year we were happy to make it the second round. This year it's it's uh you guys seem to be happy we made it, but really focused on the next game, the next play, right? Yeah, I'm celebration is short lived when you're looking past the team, so yeah. Yeah. Last week uh was kind of interesting. It was not a quarterback's game, it was uh it was a lineman's game, and the line and the defense won it for us. But what was really important, and uh, we saw it on the other side of the ball, uh, is ball control and game management, and you did a heck of a job with that. Yeah, shout out to the ball boys, keeping the ball dry. It really helped. Um, that's probably the most important factor to keeping the ball secure. Um, and, yeah, shout out to the line for the mud ball. Yep. And they kept you pretty clean. Uh, that ball was hard to hold on to, wasn't it? Of course, yeah, it was really hard. He did a great job, but there are a couple of times where you're like, whoa. And the other opposing quarterback, uh, we, they had a bunch of duffed balls, too, throughout the game. So as as it got further on, the field conditions really deteriorated. So um, so it's really interesting as a younger quarterback to see that some games are going to be won by your line. Some games are going to be won by your defense. Other games, you need to be a game manager. And then you get games like Watertown where you know you need to, you need to get three touchdowns to win the game, right? Yeah, of course. So it's going to be interesting. We uh, we know that Shawshank's going to throw a bunch of different looks at us this week. Um, it's really going to come down to good communication between you and and the line. And um, so we're spending a lot of time with that, getting ready for it. Any final thoughts uh, to the crowd or to um, anything in particular before we wrap? Not really. Just show up at 12 p.m. Um, Weston, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just be there. So 12th man theme. Does it make a difference when the crowd's full? Oh, yeah, of course, especially against Hudson. It was, it was nice looking up and seeing people there. Well, it's interesting, and that was pretty pretty tough weather. And between the rain and the crowd, even though it was, uh, wasn't was as big a crowd as usual, uh, it was loud out there, right? Yeah, it was pretty loud, especially with the opposing crowd, too. I was surprised that many, that many people came out in the rain. Yeah, I mean, for those that weren't there, it was a monsoon. It was like they had the garden hose on us for yeah, 48 minutes. Um So uh, Weston's a nice field. It's going to be on turf, totally different field to it, and it's supposed to be 41 degrees and clear. So this is kind of a quarterback's day, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm excited. Good. All right, these guys are focused. I'm going to let them go home, get some dinner. Thanks for joining us again. My name is George Webb. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Coach's Corner. Uh, We're going to post this um, on Thursday. Again, game is Saturday in Weston at 12 p.m. I think they got a bunch of playoff games going there, so there should be a pretty good crowd because uh, playoff games we be going back to back to back uh, at the field. So, again, we hope you join us for it, and uh, we look forward to coming back with a Thanksgiving edition of Coach's Corner with hopefully some, uh, some good news for everybody. All right? Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.